Today's scripture is Old Testament, Nehemiah, chapter 4, verse 15 to 20. As I read through the passage, I hope you can hear the voice of the living God. When our enemies heard that we were aware of their plot and that God had frustrated it, we all returned to the wall, each to our own work. From that day on, half of my men did the work, while the other half were equipped with spears, shields, bows, and armor. The officers posed themselves behind all the people of Judah, who were building the wall. Those who carried materials did their work with one hand and held a weapon in the other, and each of the builders wore his sword at his side as he worked. But the man who sounded the trumpet stayed with me. Then I said to the nobles, the officers, and the rest of the people, The work is extensive and spread out, and we are widely separated from each other along the wall. Wherever you hear the sound of the trumpet, join us there. Our God will fight for us. Amen. It is the first Sunday of 2021. I am sure that a number of you have already joined the worships of this new year through early morning prayers done on the first and second day of this year. It is indeed a special time within a year it is as it is full of new expectations and resolutions so i think that it is very meaningful time of the year what are you looking forward to this year what do you expect things to happen in this upcoming days? Do you looking and do you expect things a lot of things to come I think? Are you expecting your destined lover, marriage, get a job, birth of a child? Full recovery from illness, release from prison, no more debt, promotion in your company, getting along well with your family members. I'm sure that there might be a lot of wishes and well, I'm not uh, capable of looking at you uh, in online form, but let's all take a moment to think about what you wish for in this year. And I hope all of your wishes come true within the Lord's guidance and bl blessings in this new year. I also wish a uh, full victory over COVID-19 becomes one of the things that come true within this year. COVID-19 has uh, transformed our world entirely and things that we have taken as our daily life are no longer there and such change has not returned to the state that it used to be. Faith-wise, it is the same. Church doors are closed. And for the first time in modern church history, doors of chapel have been closed on Sundays. And there were those weeping in front of the church doors or sticking wishful messages on the walls of the church windows. Bible studies and socializing with fellow believers and volunteering activities and missionary works are no longer actively going on and even if it is going on what well, there we face a lot of hardships as it has been transformed, transitioned to the online form. And we no longer fully able to hear the practicing sound 
of gospel choir and orchestra members. And all of those changes and discontinuation leads us to a new question. For what reason have I done all these so far? And what is faith all about? What were the things that I was seeking after? What was worship to me? And what does worship really mean? What was I having faith in? And who am I? And who am I before the Lord? And all these kind of questions, as we ask ourselves, we are urged to go back to the essence of our faith. And some would wonder, well, and some have expectations that by the time the church doors are reopened, I would attend a church again in the physical form. But of course, around at this time, we also see those of us who are more laid back and show vulnerabilities in their faith. And these gives us the reason why we need to have more sincere and stronger faith. And we, what should be the kind of true faith that we should seek after. From the first day of the new year till now for the three days in a row through early morning prayer sessions, we have been reciting and sharing the God's words, which says, come forth as gold. And we first focused on this verse that says come forth as gold. It is written in the book of Job. And the, what does it mean by come forth as gold? It means, as we have shared on the first day, it means returning to the pure state. It does not mean that we should aim at becoming complete morally or ethically. Neither does it mean that we should desire perfection. Job was already close to the state of completeness. He was good-hearted, sincere, honest, and he honored God and he was far from evil conduct. But even if so, there was one thing asked of him. Our Lord tested him and enabled him to come forth as gold. Before the test, the Lord Job had experienced was within his human understanding and perception. So to him, coming forth as gold means becoming more strengthened in terms of faith. Through Job's dialogue with his friends, we can find out that the Lord was predictable and understandable within the logics of theology and human understanding. But during the testing journeys, however, our Lord placed Job on top of the mountain or by the riverside. And the kind of the Lord Job encountered 
was of dynamic character. So to Job, it was about knowing the God who is beyond the human comprehension and human prediction. So sometimes we may face very unpredictable situations. And we sometimes are victimized, but left defendless. We also face violence or unexpected hardships. And when we are in the midst of hardship, when we face situations that are incomprehensible, when we realize that it is our Lord's intention that we realize that our Lord is with us and He wishes us to stand still and to still hold on to our faith. And that is the kind of faith pure as gold. But this is not enough. Relying on our Lord till the end is the faith that would lead us to come forth as gold. Oh, who is our Lord then? He sacrificed His own Son to save us. He loves us so much that He crucified Himself for the sake of us. And our Lord wishes us to have this kind of belief. In no matter which, whichever kind of circumstance we've placed in, our Lord expects us to hold on to our faith and to fully rely on our Lord. And that is the essence of faith pure as gold. On the second day, we have shared that faith as gold means walking toward the promise of God. Our God is sometimes unpredictable, but not always so. When He accomplishes His grand vision, He sometimes acts in a way that is incomprehensible to human knowledge, but His intention is obvious and clear as he as we can see from every part of human nature that he created our lord through scriptures through deliverance of prophets and through jesus christ had already made his intention clear to us but it's not that we have not heard of such things that we do not get blessings it is our lack of faith not trusting his promise, not living up to his promise that to lead us to no blessings. So let's take a look at the Bible. It is full of God's words. It is all living and active. So it is a trusting the promise of our Lord. What he has promised us through his own words and fully relying on him and trust and follow our Lord's and command and teaching is what faith as gold means by. I hope we all can be prosper by fully trusting in our Lord's promise and in his promise there lies prosperity. Third, then what does he mean by faith as gold? In today's scripture, we see how true believers of our Lord should act like. Today's scripture talks about the incident of rebuilding the wall of Jerusalem. When Israelites 
or the captives and 50 years have passed. Cyrus the Great was the king of Persia and during that time he was the one sent the Jews to their homeland. And during his reign he was he was prompted by God to decree that temple in Jerusalem should be rebuilt and such Jews as care to might return to their land for this purpose. And the first thing the Jews did after returning to their homeland was, re was building the church temple. Eighty years passed by since then, and the second group of people returned to Jerusalem along with Ezra. And this time, church temple was established, but it was not fully restored as people were not aware of what to do and what practices they should follow. It was around this time that all the wrong practices were corrected and readjusted. A proper form of worship was served since then in the church temple with proper practices and conducts. Jerusalem was indeed has become the province belong to the Lord. Even if so, there were pillages, attacks, and various hardships in Jerusalem. And it seems as if our Lord had turned his back against the province. Nehemiah, the governor, returned to Jerusalem and looked for the reasons for this. He realized that it was the broken wall that made the city vulnerable to plunders, attacks, and various hardships. He then decided to rebuild the city wall. Then why didn't they rebuild the city wall until then. Maybe they lacked the manpower, they lacked the leadership, but at the same time, they might have thought that since this prov prov providence belongs to the Lord, our Lord would protect His own land and his own property. There would be no need for human effort. But everyone, the Nehemiah and his followers all came together to reconstruct the wall. In the verse 19 of chapter 4, it says, Then I said to the nobles, officials, and the rest of the people, the work is extensive and spread out, and we are widely separated from each other along the wall. We could imagine how extensive the construction site has been, how workers were spread out, since everyone was dispersed, each one of them might have felt lonely or isolated. But all the workers, each one of them, piled up the rocks and stones at the place where they were, and the city wall was being built this way. But at the same time, they were worried. What if enemies attacked them 
before the walls are fully constructed. So therefore, as we can see in the verse 16, it says, From that day on, half of my men did the work, while the other half were equipped with spears, shields, bows, and armor. The officers posted themselves behind all the people of Judah. So we can see that they had strategies. There were builder groups, defender groups, as well as leading groups. Everyone was ready to fight back when enemies attack. They stayed vigilant. So, Bible illustrates how fully equipped they were against their enemies. And in the verse 21 to 23, it says, so we continued the work with half the men holding spears from the first light of dawn till the stars came out. At that time, I also said to the people, have every man in his helper stay inside Jerusalem at night so they can serve us as guards by night and as workers by day. Neither I nor my brothers nor my men nor my guards with me took off my clothes. Each had his weapon even when he went for water. So we can see that they didn't take off their garments or shoes. They took their weapons with them even when they went for water. So from early dawn to starting night, they fully guarded themselves against the enemies. So each one of them, they tried their best to defend themselves, guard against the enemies, and they worked on the reconstruction. Not only that, as they were spread out, they came up with an idea to facilitate their communication. In verse 20, it says, Wherever you hear the sound of the trumpet, join us there. Our God will fight for us. So they have these communication signals in times of emergency. So we can see that they planned out to systematically came up with very concrete action plans. And after all the preparations on their side, if they still face attack, they then declared, our God will fight for us. Do you feel the gravity of this verse? Even if the province belonged to the Lord, they did not stand idly and say, I would simply pray and watch what God would do and do nothing on my own as I have full trust in Him. They prepared thoroughly and came up with strategies. And they, if they were real attacks, they would surely move forward and fight against their enemies. There's one important message that we need to keep in mind. All those workers, they worked hand in hand and they tried their best. They act and worked as if they, as if their Lord were not there to protect them. And only after they were fully prepared, they then declared, 
Our God will fight for us. We need to keep in mind this kind of conduct of the Christian believers. There are those of us who mistakenly believe that praying to God alone would be enough. I don't need to do anything on my side. And some even consider it a higher level of faith. Even in the midst of COVID-19, some believe that prayer alone would do well. And since I trust in the Lord, our God would do everything. And then there's nothing on my side. There's nothing on my side to do. But we need to keep in mind that while we pray sincerely to our Lord, we need to keep social distance and to follow health authority guidelines. So, faith as gold doesn't mean neglecting our reality or turn our eyes from it. By trying our best and fully trusting in Him, we could then be able to ask our Lord for help and guidance. And it applies to our daily activities as we run the business, as we study, or in various activities of our daily life, we should strive to do our best. We should look for ways to solve the challenges. We should come up with strategies. And by doing so, we can come up to the Lord and our Lord would work along with us and empower us what is presence and blessings. We need to remember that your part of work should come alone. It means working alone with God. When we build up the city wall alone with God, our God will surely help us with his presence and blessings. I see many Korean churches and the hardships that we all face these days. I'd like to ask all of us to pile up the bricks of broken walls at the very place you set your foot on. Remember that we should do our part. It is our role to pile up the bricks of broken walls. It is our role to stay connected and respond to the signs and the trumpet sounds. If you do so, our Lord would surely help us with his blessings. And by the time we are fully ready to come forth, when we try our best, and when we strongly believe that our Lord is with us, and that is the face as gold that our Lord would like us to have. Let us pray. Heavenly God, let us have a strong faith towards you. No matter what circumstance we are placed in, let us believe in you that you are stronger than us, full of wisdom. Let us work with, walk with promise you have made on us and give us the faith that is gold, 
Just like Nehemiah and his followers, we would like to rebuild the broken down wall of Jerusalem in this year. Let us try our best and fully dedicate ourselves on rebuilding the church that is your body. Let us build up the church with one mind and heart and become the followers of yours who make your will on earth come true. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.